There is maybe no Windows PC maker that's catering to creators more than Asus with its ProArt lineup. A prime example is the StudioBook 16 OLED H5600 laptop tempting artists with an AMD NVIDIA performance punch, 4K OLED display, Asus dial for video or photo editing, and more. Unlike last year's ProArt StudioBook 1, it's more modestly spec and priced. But can this take the place of a higher priced content creation laptop or even a gaming PC with similar parts? To find out, I got a hold of one and put it to work on some photo and video editing jobs with a little bit of gaming on the side. The ProArt StudioBook has an attractive basic black square-edged body with the only noticeable feature being the subtle ProArt logo on top. It's certainly not the smallest 16-inch laptop out there, but with a 0.77-inch thickness and 5.28-pound heft, it's relatively slim and light. Asus says its IceCool Pro thermal solution boosts airflow by up to 16%, keeping noise levels below 40 dBA in normal mode. If needed for rendering or other chores, performance mode boosts CPU power up to 95 watts with a commensurate increase in fan noise. The most attention-grabbing feature is the 3840x2400 16x10 OLED display, the first 16-inch 4K OLED laptop display, Asus claims. As with other OLED PC displays I've seen, the specs hardly do it justice. It's sharp, vibrant, and beautiful in person. The panel is factory calibrated to both Pantone and Kalman color accuracy standards. It offers 100% DCI-P3 color coverage, allowing for precise color correction in Adobe Lightroom, DaVinci Resolve, and other similar programs. The million to one contrast ratio with inky OLED blacks makes it a joy for content, whether you're creating it or consuming it. With 550 nits of brightness, it conforms to Visa's Display HDR True Black 500 standard for OLED displays. That's slightly short of the top True Black 600 standard and well below the 1000 nit plus panels on the new MacBook Pros, but I think it's about as bright as you'd need a laptop display to be. The other headline feature is the ProArt dial. I wouldn't blame you for thinking that this is a gimmick, as control surfaces often look cool, but end up never being used. This one has a few things in its favor though. It feels nice thanks to the textured grip, smooth rotation, and clicky detents. Mainly though, it's just easy to find without moving your hand very far, as it's located just below and to the left of the keyboard. And that way, it makes more sense than something like Microsoft's Surface Dial, which is usually placed outside, easy grabbing distance. With no app open, you can use it to turn up the sound or increase monitor brightness. You really need Adobe's Creative Cloud suite to make the most of it though. With Photoshop open, pressing the dial launches a dedicated menu with brush options, layer zoom, and so on. Pressing the brush menu option opens sub options for hardness, flow, opacity, and more. Premiere and After Effects have similar custom menus. I've used control surfaces in the past as part of my former video editing career, but I haven't been a big fan of them on PCs. However, after trying the Asus style with Photoshop and Premiere Pro, I got used to it pretty fast. It was natural to keep one hand on the keyboard and the other on the dial to jog video, swap tools, and so on. Before long, it was second nature and sped up my workflow. Moving to the front of the laptop, the trackpad is smooth, responsive, and has not just two, but three buttons, taking me back to the 2000s when all PC mice had this. The third one adds an extra control that could be useful for 3D or CAD apps, editing, and so on. It's also the first laptop touchpad from Asus that supports styluses, including its own. That allows artists to use the touchpad as a precise drawing tablet. The keyboard has decent travel and a nice amount of spring back. However, the entire keyboard is shifted upwards more than usual and the keys are a touch small. That's because the Asus dial takes up a fair amount of space. As for ports, it's fairly well equipped with two USB-C 3.2 Gen 2 10 gigabit per second connections, two USB-A 3.2 Gen 2 ports, HDMI 2.1, an audio jack, and RJ45 Ethernet. 
It's nice that Asus incorporated a bleeding edge SD Express card slot that can read data from supported cards at an awesome 985 megabytes per second. There's a rather huge problem though. If you insert an SD UHS-2 card used by tons of cameras, the studio book will only read it at UHS-1 speeds, 100 megabytes per second instead of 300 megabytes per second. Since no cameras support SD Express yet, I'd have rather seen a standard UHS-2 slot. For sound, Asus incorporated an audiophile grade ESS Sabre DAC, promising lower distortion and expanded dynamic range. The speakers are well above average for a laptop like this, with decent mid range sound and acceptable bottom end. Other features include a fingerprint reader on the power button, along with a top mounted IR webcam with Windows Hello support and a privacy shutter. Now let's talk about performance. The top-end ProArt StudioBook OLED 16 I'm testing uses the RTX 3070 mobile GPU rather than the top-end RTX 3080. I don't have a problem with that as an RTX 3080 wouldn't speed up creative apps that much and adds cost and heat. And I hate hot laptops. All the other parts are high-end. It's got AMD's top mobile 8-core Ryzen 5900HX chip, 32GB of RAM, and 2TB of NVMe storage in RAID 0. I ran the ProArt Studiobook through our usual battery of performance tests. It performed near the top in all of them, and a few things stood out to me. With the RAID 0 NVMe storage, disk speeds are stupendously fast at up to 5.6 gigabytes per second read speeds. It can't be overstated how much that helps disk intensive apps like Premiere Pro. Gaming is not this laptop's raison d'etre, but I did some anyway, and it acquitted itself beautifully with Cyberpunk, Destiny 2, and other titles. Frame rates were near the top we've seen for 4K gaming. I also ran tests more geared to content creation, like Maxon's Cinebench R23, Geekbench 5.4 Pro, Puget Systems' Puget Bench for Photoshop, Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve, and Handbrake 1.4. Again, I saw top-notch results compared to other recent creative and gaming laptops. Tests are fine, but creativity laptops need to prove themselves at work too. To that end, I edited a camera review video with this laptop using DaVinci Resolve 17.2 and this video with the latest version of Premiere Pro. I also dipped into Photoshop, After Effects and Lightroom. Again, the ProArt StudioBook acquitted itself with honors, offering fluid 4K editing even with GPU-intensive camera codecs. I was able to export 4K videos at about 200% speed with color correction, text and other effects on nearly every shot. For a desktop replacement laptop that will often run off of wall power, the StudioBook has surprisingly good battery life. It ran for 6 hours in our 1080p video loop rundown test and even longer for normal browsing and work chores. The AMD Ryzen 9's efficiency likely helps a lot here. It was relatively quiet during all these chores as well, with the fan only kicking in on complex scenes or exports. In the end, is the Asus ProArt StudioBook 16 OLED laptop worth getting over rival creative models or a comparably equipped gaming laptop? Without a doubt. It's not just fast, but smooth and reliable across creative chores. It handles 4K editing and large photos without getting overly hot and noisy. It's not even a bad gaming machine, though the 60Hz 4K screen isn't ideal for that. We don't have exact pricing yet, but the model I'm testing here is going to cost around $3,000 and offers a better spec list than any rival creative laptops in that range. And don't forget that this studio book has features not found on any laptop, creative or otherwise, like the 16 inch 4K OLED display and ProArt dial. I haven't been excited about too many laptops lately, but I'm pretty gaga about this one and I can't recommend it enough. Thanks for watching and to stay on top of the latest review videos and more, please hit subscribe.